can everyone hear me? Perfect. All right. Uh, morning. Thank you, everyone, for joining the last session before lunchtime. Uh, we'll try and make it nice and quick. Put the door. Cool. Um, yeah, so the title of this talk today is Teaching Padawans to Chop Wood and Carry Water in Their Open Source Journey. So we're hoping to focus on mentoring, particularly like OpenStack flavored mentoring, given where we are. Uh, we're hoping by the end of this talk that you'll have a, we'll say, a good idea of the opportunities, opportunities that are available to you as either a mentor, potential mentor, or potential mentee. And we're hoping as well that you'll like pick up a few tips from like professionals such as Victoria here. So, uh, before we get started, we should probably introduce ourselves. Um, my name's Stephen, Stephen Finucane, or Stephen Finn on IRC. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat, and as you can tell from the photo, I'm also in Egypt for choosing to spend the last year of my life working on a broadcast house uh, that's consuming all of my time. Uh, so it's been nice this week to be thinking of something other than asbestos. Um, when I'm not risking my life and limb uh, working on houses, I tend to write a lot of code. I've been involved in OpenStack since 2015. Uh, most of that time I've been working on Nova, but I've also worked in SDK, in OpenStack Client. I've messed around with Cinder and stuff. Apologies in advance for anyone here that I've, uh, whose bro projects I've broken at some point over the last few years. All right, and hi everyone. I am Victoria Martinez de la Cruz. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. Um, I have been involved with OpenStack uh, for a couple of years now. Actually, my first contribution um, was in 2014. My first summit was of OpenStack Summit in Portland. Um, and that was because of, well, basically I got involved with an outreach internship, which is we are going to be talking about in a couple of minutes. Um, the picture I have on the screen for me is very, very important. It has a lot of emotions for me. <laughs> the, the person in the middle, that's Flavio Percoco. He was my mentor for Google Summer of Code, and it was for the OpenStack Summit in Austin. Um, and uh, well, after my initial contribution, as I mentioned, to the, to the dashboard, I have been jumping around different projects within OpenStack. Um, I have been contributing to Sakar project. I have been contributing to Trove. And nowadays, I find my home in the OpenStack Manila project, which is a uh, shared file system as a service, uh, which, well, I continue to uh, contribute and mentor and well get people involved. All right, so uh, let's just start by talking a bit about uh, the history of uh, mentoring within the OpenStack community. And uh, well, I, I like that this part a lot because I kind of follow the process since its beginnings. Um, as I mentioned, I started contributing to OpenStack thank you to uh, an internship, which is nowadays known as Orichi. That's the logo in the middle. Um, back then, it was the Orichi Prom for Women. Um, I was the first cohort of uh, mentees that uh, the OpenStack community has. And uh, after that, I continued to get involved with this project, uh, sorry, with this program by doing some mentoring tasks. Then I joined as a coordinator for the program. Uh, nowadays, there are super nice people taking care of. I, I just gave a step back. Uh, but well, I have been involved with the program since then. Um, this program saw um, the participation of so much people uh, from the time I, I did it, which was 2013 till now. We got more than 50 uh, mentees uh, from all over the world, contributing to more than 15 uh, projects within the OpenStack community. Um, also participating in the Google Summer of Code, which is uh, the logo in the top left. That's another really good internship that aims to get the students to contribute to open source projects. Um, we have a brief participation. We have been trying to participate since then again. But while we, uh, we are looking always for co uh, coordinators that are willing to step in and to help with mentoring activities. Um, those are not the only um, internship or mentoring programs that you have within the OpenStack community. Um, the OpenStack community has uh, participating in so many other efforts, such as um, some internships or co cooperation programs with uh, US universities. Some of the universities that participated with us already was Northeastern University, Oregon State University, North Dakota State University, and Boston University. Um, and well, apart from that, which are like the long uh, internship efforts. Uh, we also participated in, in other efforts which are like um, for only one day or two days. Um, Great Hope Acceleration is an example of that. Uh, that's a conference that happens once a year and we usually participate in the open source day. 
Um, this is a really nice event that we are going to talk a bit more later uh, that basically helps people that maybe has a background uh, in a technical background, but they are not really familiar with open source. So we help them to get involved with the community and to look for a way for them to contribute. Other efforts that are not on the slide, but well, actually, I think they worth mentioning it, are like the option training. That's uh, an event that has been running uh, in OpenStack for a while. Usually, it's a training for people that, again, has a background in, uh, has a technical background, but they are not very familiar with open source contributions uh, and the speed mentoring. Probably you see that in the schedule for this summit. And now, um, before moving to, um, uh, some other topics and some more details on, on, on our experience on mentoring. Uh, perhaps one of the first questions that we can think about when mentoring or when talking with people that is willing to mentor, like why you would mentor. And actually we see a lot of benefits, not only for the people that you are getting involved, but also for yourself if you want to mentor. Um, Perhaps the most obvious uh, reason for mentoring is that you are empowering willing contributors. It is no news that uh, when, uh, when people want to get involved with open source, sometimes it is not so straightforward, it's not so simple for them to join. Uh, usually they have to face processes, tools, um, maybe you know, some language barriers, uh, sometimes some issues. And uh, if you are willing to mentor someone, basically you are allowing them to, to get easier to the actual contribution part. You can help them understand better and follow the processes in, a, in an easier way. And uh, this usually, it's, um, it's a great thing for them because it's like uh, you not only help them to, to success on what they want to do, but also you connect them with other people that may be willing to help with them. Um, also, well, foster diversity in the community. Uh, OpenStack has been historically a, a community that has been pretty diverse. I'm talking about uh, geo geographical diversity, cultural diversity, languages, time zones. Like it's a it's a worldwide community, but. Um, most of us are here because we are working in a tech company or we are in an organization that use OpenStack or some uh, project within the Open Infra Foundation um, with a technical background. Uh, with mentoring, we allow people that maybe are in the school or maybe they don't have a background, uh, a technical background to actually um, learn about it and to make their first contribution. Uh, this is also um, the third reason I can mention. Uh, because of this diversity, because these uh, different views uh, that we bring up in the community, we get uh, really fresh ideas, really um, diverse point of views. And sometimes it, it happened for us that we have been, I don't know, working for so long in a specific task or a specific problem. And we would get, you know, a newcomer saying, hey, have you thought about this or have you thought about that? And it's for us, <laughs> uh, like, yeah, it's like, it's a good idea and thank you so much. And that's how we make them uh, start contributing and get involved with, uh, with the community and stay with the community as well. Um, now let's talk about uh, personally, you as a person, you as a professional, you get a lot of understanding of uh, the project you are mentoring. Um, usually when you have to teach, uh, at least for me, that was my experience when I had to teach about something, when I had to share my knowledge about something, um, that actually took me to the next level of actually understanding what's going on. Um, and uh, it helped me to, um, to work on my um, teaching skills, on how I communicate ideas. That's something that is not minor, and I think it's uh, something that you have to consider when um, taking on mentoring. This is uh, a, a learning experience for yourself as well. Um, and uh, because of this great synergy of uh, feelings and learning and, uh, well, community that we usually have on, on these experiences, uh, we are training the next generation of the open source maintainers. Uh, I have many cases in which uh, we had interns working with us for, I don't know, three to six months. And after the internship finishes, like they say, uh, okay, I want to continue contributing to this because I love the community. I love the people working here. I am very excited about what I'm doing. And I really want to get, you know, a full-time job in order to continue doing this. Uh, fortunately, we had the several cases in which this happened. And nowadays, they are maintainers of the projects that they contribute to. Um, we would love to see this happening more often, uh, but well, um, definitely something that we can uh, discuss better uh, afterwards. But uh, that's our goal as well. 
Uh, and last but not least, this has to do with diversity again and getting people from other areas that is not in the tech field. Um, we can get, um, we can recruit uh, people from a variety of, of places, a variety of backgrounds. Uh, sometimes it is not that easy to get uh, people involved and uh, there is a lot of offering for jobs uh, within the communities and actually getting um, diverse sources of, um, of talents uh, help us to, to open source community to grow. All right, uh, let's quickly move to what's our involvement. Um, Again, uh, as I mentioned, I started as an intern, continued to be a mentor, and then coordinator for Richie. Uh, then I also participated in Google Summer of Code. Um, also participated uh, in several open source days for Grace Hopper celebration. And last but not least, and I'm going to take more time, <laughs> I want you to, to share experience, um, some um, uh, internships with, uh, well, actually projects with the uh, US universities. So I, in case the size don't indicate that, I have a lot less experience with the mentoring stuff than Victoria does. Um, we'll go into these two mentorship uh, programs in a little more detail uh, in a moment. But uh, in summary, I've worked with two universities over the course of the past two years, North Dakota State University and Boston and Northeastern Universities. Um, for anyone that was at the OpenStack or the OpenStack SDK slash OSC session earlier this week, you probably heard me talking about this. Um, and in particular, you probably heard me extolling the virtues of getting students to work on the kind of projects that we got them to work on over the course of the past year. Um, there's a couple of things uh, that we've, we've learned from doing this. Uh, in a strange kind of twist of fate, we're actually going to focus on these two topics instead of, uh, let's say, some of Victoria's more extensive background here. Uh, the reason for this is intentional, uh, and it's because the two uh, internship programs were so similar Despite, but we were able to make some changes because of them being quite close together and observe the differences, the impact that those changes made. Uh, I'll run through those now in a moment. Um, but yeah, that, that's the kind of the basic idea of why we're going through this. So looking at those two programs in a little more detail, uh, both of the programs uh, involved four students from a research university. Uh, the first one, obviously, North Dakota. The second one being Boston and Northeastern. They both ran for uh, three months, uh, but the key kind of, let's we'll say, measurable metric that came out of that was uh, what actually got landed as a result of uh, these mentorship programs. This might not seem like a whole lot of patches, but when you consider that the amount of work that goes into onboarding uh, a new person in OpenStack, this is a fairly decent return on investment over the course of a very short uh, internship or mentorship period of three months. Um, in, like that's whatever, 150, nearly 150% increase in delivery and more importantly, the amount of stuff that was like left over at the end of the mentorship was like significantly decreased, uh, which for us showed that their, their ability, the students' ability to actually finish out patches, see them through, uh, was massively improved between the two. And uh, we decided that we'd kind of analyze what we did differently over the course of the two mentorship programs. So because all good things come in threes, I've broken this down into kind of three categories or themes of uh, things that we did differently or things that we think you should focus on over the course of a mentorship. Uh, and we're going to run through those at the moment. Uh, the first of these was, we'll say, your goals and objectives. I think this is probably the most important um, aspect of this, particularly when it comes to OpenStack. Um, as, as anyone here that's either operated or contributed to OpenStack will know, it's a it's a massive beast. There's an awful lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of prerequisite knowledge needed just to start contributing, whether it's getting involved with the IRC, whether it's getting uh, Garrett set up, deploying DevStack, and spending weeks trying to debug why it doesn't work. Even, we'll say in the case of students, getting used to working with Linux um, and virtual machines, this kind of thing. So while you may wish to say, OK, we want to go and add you know, mega feature X to whatever your project is, uh, that's probably not going to be a realistic in the kind of time spent that you typically have available for a mentor or an intern. Um, so instead of, we'll say, adding feature X, uh, we found that if you constrain your scope and you think more in terms of, like, add this little feature to uh, the SDK or to the project, add another feature, add another feature, and kind of build it iteratively, 
it tends to um, give you a nicer feedback loop uh, and it uh, means that the students feel like they're actually making progress and you as a mentor, uh, you feel like the students are making progress and you, you're helping them out basically. Um, the other thing that's kind of uh, important to note is we'll say your objectives and your goals should be very clear from the outset. Uh, we made this mistake in the first, um, first round of mentoring. We said, okay, these, these guys are gonna work on OpenStack SDK. And as anyone that's ever worked on OpenStack SDK will know, there's fewer layers in an onion. Like it's a, it's a very complex beast, uh, partially as well as of, of its heritage being two projects munched together and partially as a result of the fact that it has to obscure differences between all the APIs of the various OpenStack services. So by basically ensuring that you're very clear in your own head about what the students or the interns should be working on, um, you'll make your own life easier and you'll make their lives easier. Um, they have something to work towards. Um, and then finally on this point, uh, I mentioned about even the ability, inability to, or the inexperience with things like Linux. Make sure you try and set up the right tools and decide on what you're gonna use ahead of time. So uh, if that's, that could be something as simple as deciding to use you know, Google Calendar to set up monthly uh, or weekly meetings with them. We'll go into that in a moment. Um, using Jitsi, BlueJeans, Google Meet, whatever you want for video conferencing, providing a dev stack instance to try, get, try and help them avoid having to deal with all of that. Um, even things like you know, setting up an IRC bouncer. If you have an IRC bouncer, ZNC instance or something, give them access to it, tell them to use ISE Cloud, that kind of thing. On the second kind of theme or category, communication, we found that communication is ultra important, especially at the beginning of the project. This is like, this kind of makes sense when you think about it, but it's something that we found people can often kind of skip over. Um, expect these things to be very high touch, especially at the beginning of the project. Um, all of this knowledge that's in your head, you need to somehow get it out of your head and transfer it into the students or interns head somehow. So that's usually going to involve talking with them very often, uh, ideally at least once a week and occasionally more. Um, you might need to schedule one-to-ones occasionally. Um, you might need to schedule, let's say, ad hoc things if uh, the folks are stuck on some particular topic. Um, you should try and write down as much of the stuff that you're doing as possible. So I said about earlier about having clear objectives and goals. Write those objectives and goals down. If you've done some research to figure out, oh, the guy should work on this particular area, write that down somewhere, how you came about that information. Uh, you can use a blog, you can use Etherpad, you can use Google Docs, whatever works, just make sure it's written down somewhere. And then a, a final point, uh, try and get everyone involved in your own internal conversations, and then if possible, try and get them to start talking to the community. Uh, if, you're, if you've got people working on Cinder, if you've got people working on Manila, whatever, uh, you may be acting as the mentor for these uh, students or interns, but there's a good chance that there's multiple other people in that community that are more than happy to kind of help, whether it's with reviews, whether it's with just general feedback, point them to documentation on like coding standards, whatever it is, get them involved and then also make sure that the people are talk, like the students and interns are talking to you. You can often go into a meeting, you have four interns there and one of them is doing all of the talking. Try and drag in those additional people, make sure that they're not keeping quiet because they're stuck or they're embarrassed to talk. Um, these are all really important skills. As anyone that's contributed here knows, like sitting quietly in your corner and working on your own thing isn't very productive, you're much better to go and write your specs, try and kind of build advocacy for features or bug fixes, this kind of stuff. Regular communication is really important. And then third, um, uh, the final point is kind of the general process stuff. Um, the key point here is feedback. So remember that these uh, students and interns, they're in the same position that you probably were whenever you started your career and they're going to, there's gonna be stuff that you'll have learned along the way uh, that is generally gonna be useful to impart upon them. So give them feedback if you think they're doing stuff that's really good, let them know. If you think they're doing stuff that they should possibly improve on, make sure you let them know about that. Especially if you're mentoring uh, students from a university perspective, there's a good chance that professors or lecturers will come looking for this feedback afterwards. 
So ideally, you don't want to get to the end of the three month or six month uh, period and have to be given this negative feedback that such and such didn't get engaged or they struggled for too long um, because they weren't giving that feedback over the course of the internship. Um, you also need to make sure that you set aside time for this stuff. I said earlier about setting up you know, at least weekly meetings, particularly at the beginning. But remember, if they're submitting code or even documentation fixes, you're going to need to spend some time doing reviews. You can obviously lean on the broader community to do this, but as a mentor, um, you're the first person that they're going to reach out to for this, so make sure you set aside an hour or two a week. The flip side of that is that um, you don't have to do everything for them, um, and it's probably not healthy for them to have their mentor as a crutch. Um, try and set some limits uh, if needed. If you have a student or an intern that's reaching out to you on a regular basis, or worse, uh, expecting you to write code for them, try and push back on that, or do push back on that, and make sure that um, they are learning from this process and you're not just doing everything for them. And then finally, um, stay professional. Remember that these folks are potentially your future colleagues, future friends, um, and it would be nice to kind of be able to work with these guys in the future. Um, again, they're, they're in the same position that you were in at some point in the past, and uh, try and you know, show them the same compassion, see, compassion and decency that you would like shown to you uh, in their position. So these are um, just a couple of the, the key, we'll say, learnings and points that we took out of these. Uh, but there's a lot more. I'm pretty sure anyone that's in the audience, probably if you've ever been involved in this, have your own ideas. Feel free to catch Victoria or I after this, and um, we'll be happy to kind of discuss it in a little more detail. All right, so those are great tips <laughs> for sure. I, I really share some of them and um, it sounds good, sounds easy. Now it's like, okay, how I do I get it started? As mentioned, um, we're getting back to this slide again. Uh, there are so many um, efforts available in the uh, open infra community that you can actually join. Uh, or Richie perhaps for me is the more familiar one. We are going to cover that quickly uh, now. Uh, the U.S. University is one as well. is a very good um, opportunity as well. And, uh, well, a great hopper celebration for those that maybe cannot afford right now to spend uh, three months or more uh, mentoring. It's a great way for you to, you know, have your first experience on mentoring. Um, so I'm just going, like, all, all these slides has a lot of information. The goal of it, this was for, for us to leave uh, some reference so you can check. So I'm going to quickly cover this, but uh, you can get the slides later and, and check them out. So um, Orichi is currently, uh, has currently a round happening right now. We got two interns working for OpenStack, one in Manila, one in uh, Neutron. Uh, and this internship goes from May to August. But there is going to be a next round, uh, which is going to be by the end of year. The applications usually start on September, October, and the internships go from December to March for the next year. Um, applying as a mentor is not uh, complicated. Um, basically, you need to think about a task that can be done in a three-month period uh, and apply yourself as a mentor. Commitments, uh, well, um, I'm going to refer to the advice that uh, Stephen mentioned. Um, it's, this is very flexible. You're going to uh, probably pick whatever wor works best for you, but we advise that you keep you know, communication fluent and you have meetings regularly with them at least once a week, and you help them to get connected with other people in the community to actually uh, uh, fulfill the, the, their contribution. Um, all right. Going to go over the U.S. universities. Usually, we get notifications about uh, these uh, internships uh, on the mailing list in uh, OpenStack accounts. Um, and uh, well, um, these um, internships vary depending on the, the university. It can be from one semester to two semesters. And uh, these internships work differently to a Richie in the sense that. Uh, normally, we um, work together like with several mentors. It's not you mentoring some uh, one person only, but uh, a couple of mentors, uh, say three or four mentors, uh, mentoring a group of three or four people. All right. And finally, uh, the Grace uh, Hopper Celebration Open Source Day. This is an event that usually happens September, October. I think this year is going to be September 20, uh, from 20 to 23. Uh, registrations are not open yet, but uh, we are still looking for a mentor for this event. 
Um, this one works um, very similarly in the sense that you have to think about a task that your um, mentee uh, has to work during that day. Uh, you will need to, to get something for the event and uh, well, uh, prepare for prep program for, with this person and do a really quick onboarding to the community, to the process, to the tools, and to the issue that you want them to fix. And uh, last but not least, uh, this is also an open question for you. There are other opportunities that we know. Um, do you know any other one? If so, please let us know. But we have been looking again into Google Summer of Code, for instance, uh, into also the season of docs, which is very similar to Google Summer of, Doc, uh, to Google Summer of Code, but obviously uh, focus on, on creation for docs. And Hacktoberfest, that's a GitHub um, internship, um, but well. Um, we are researching on these ones, we want to learn more, and we want uh, people to help us to, to participate on this. So if you're interested, please let us know. And with that, I think that's a wrap up. I don't know if there are questions or comments, or I think we have four more minutes. And if not, uh, you can catch Victoria yeah. or I anywhere in the corridor for what's left of this week. So the question was, uh, I spoke about the worst case scenario where you'd have a, a mentor, or an intern or student that would expect them to write the code for you. Um, what would be strategies for avoiding this? Um, in, in my case, and I'll let Victoria speak to this uh, in a moment, in my case, it was pretty much uh, discussing it with the student, uh, discussing, or discussing my expectations around what I expected uh, from them, uh, providing written material where possible, and basically just any time I was asked to write code, pushing back on it, um, points them in the right direction and stuff. Don't do it. Um, was my yeah was my solution. I'm sure there's probably a clever strategy, but yeah, I I, I run into that a couple of times as well, and I, it's it's hard to push back. It's uh, you have to be quite um, strong on that. Uh, something I have to, uh, something I try was to actually um, pair program with this person. Like I will say, okay, we can code together. Like I'm not going to write the code for with you, uh, but we can work together, and I can follow what you're writing, and we can think together on how to get this done. And usually, um, sometimes you, the first times you do that is hard because you actually need to. Um, to be very clear on what needs to be done and, and you know, try to encourage the thinking on their side. But after they, they get used to the workflow, it's, uh, it's a bit easier and, and they actually learn how to do things. So well, I guess. One other key point on that is, um, I didn't mention about communication between mentors, but that's also important. Um, Artem uh, was one of the other mentors in both of those programs. And it was only after the first program wrapped up that we actually discussed this and we both realized we'd had the same observation, but we'd never communicated that with each other. We were careful to do that then in the second one. Um, and that way we can kind of give this, be given consistent feedback um, to the particular student. So the question was whether there'd be a particular type of feature or bug that should be preferred. Um, say what, how would you go about choosing your work, I guess? Um, not, not really. The biggest thing is, is the constraint in the scope and choosing, like, let's say, sensible features. Um, adding some feature that would take you six months to do isn't really, isn't viable, obviously, for a three-month internship, isn't, still isn't really viable for a six-month thing. Um, so we'll say, you want to add this feature, try and think of like the min minimum viable products. What would you do, APIs, that kind of thing. In general though, um, choose something that's, that's somewhat interesting, that's comprehensible for somebody that's not you know, in playing inside baseball, that isn't you know, knee deep in neutron code and stuff. Um, and yeah, it, it, somewhat exciting. Yeah. Something that they could see is usually beneficial. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So, and that's could be also some kind of judgment. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what, what he's saying is it's that it's generally more interesting to work on new features as opposed to bugs. Um, it depends, like, how do you want to clarify it? So, we'll say closing the OpenStack client gaps. That's arguably a bug, arguably a feature. It's kind of somewhere in between. Um, I think those were quite useful because they were very visible. You could run your tests and stuff, and you could see actual, you know, API responses and stuff. Um, you know, fixing off by one errors and stuff is probably less meaningful. So it's just, yeah, bug fixes can be interesting. It, it's very subjective, and probably up to your your own kind of experience and verdict on it. Usually, like wish list uh, task, like enhancements to to something that already exists that we often see, okay, maybe this, this would be great, this would make usability better, this would make, I don't know, um, this would make this feature way better, uh, but we don't have enough time to work on that. Those usually are great candidates for these kind of tasks. Okay. OpenStack clients again, perfect example of that. Yeah, OpenStack SDK. Everyone likes it, nobody <laughs> wants to do it. <laughs> Uh, we're at time, so we might wrap up there. Feel free to grab us afterwards if you have any questions, and enjoy what's left of the summit. Thank you. <laughs>